Welcome back, my calculus adventurers. Here's our question today. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals 2 over x, and the tangent line has to pass through the point 5 comma 0. And this is a bit of a curveball tangent line question because much more often tangent line problems are one of these two types. Either they tell you the x location where you're supposed to build the tangent line, and in those cases you take the derivative and then plug in that x value into your derivative to find the slope of the tangent line, and then you finish finding the tangent line equation. Or another common tangent line problem is they tell you um, to find a point where the tangent line has a certain slope. They might say find horizontal tangent lines, which would be slope zero, or um, where the tangent line has the same slope as blah, blah, blah equation, or they might even tell you what slope you're aiming for. So these are the two most common tangent line questions. This is a bit of a curveball because they do not tell you the x value where you're going to build your tangent line because this is actually not the point where you're building the tangent line. I'll show you that in a sec. And they do not tell you what slope the tangent line has to have. So it's a bit of a third category. You have to be a little more creative but you still get to follow the same steps. So tangent line problems, if you're ever in doubt, you start by taking the derivative. So the curve they give us is y equals two over x. To make it more derivative friendly, I'll write it in the form of an exponent because then I can just use the power rule to take the derivative. So y prime equals negative one times two x to the negative one minus one. So here is our y prime, but we don't have an x value to plug in. And here's a picture of what we're doing in this problem. So we have this curve, 2 over x. It's great to know some of the most common types of graphs that come up in calculus, and 1 over x is a very common type of graph that shows up, and 2 over x more or less looks exactly the same as 1 over x. So we have some unknown point, x1 comma y1, where we're building our tangent line. And all we know about that tangent line is that it passes through the point on the x-axis, 5 comma 0. So this is roughly our picture here. And um, so that's the picture. And keep in mind that x1 comma y1, that is going to be our point where we're building the tangent line. So our slope of our tangent line, you're going to plug in this x value into your derivative. It doesn't feel very satisfying because x1 isn't like a specific number, but that's the same steps you do in every tangent line problem. So we can follow that same guideline, y prime plug in x1. And so this is going to be our slope of our tangent line. Not too satisfying, but we can still use it. And we have our tangent line equation using point slope form. You have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we just put in what we got for the slope here. This looks a little bit wild. There's a lot of unknowns going on. But we do know one other point that has to be on the tangent line. So any point that you know of that is on a line should satisfy the equation of the line. So next we can plug in the point that we know has to be on our tangent line. The y-coordinate of our point is 0, so we put that in for y. y1 is just y1. That represents the unknown but constant y-coordinate where we're building our tangent line. Here's our slope again, and then the x-coordinate that we know is on the line is 5. So 5 minus x1 here. So we still have only one equation and two unknowns. Our x1 and y1 are both unknown, um, but we have another piece of information that we know is true, and that's that y1 
this y coordinate here is not allowed to be just anything it wants to be. Once you choose an x1, it has to be on this curve 2 over x. And so the y coordinate is just going to be 2 over x1. So y1 equals 2 over x1, and we can substitute that back in. So instead of y1, we're going to put 2 over x1. Exactly the same equation, but we're plugging in. And this is a fantastic point to be at because we have one, un one equation and one unknown. So now we can just solve for x1. So we very carefully solve for x1. The zero can disappear. And here we can distribute across our parentheses to have our two terms here. Okay, and then we notice that an x1 top and bottom will cancel here in this last term. So we have 2 over x1 there. And what we can do is we can add that to the other side since that's a like term with the negative 2 over x1 on the left-hand side. So we subtract this right-hand term over to the left-hand side. Negative 2 over x1 minus 2 over x1 that has the same common denominator. So when you're adding fractions with the same denominator, you just add the numerators. We get negative 4 over x1 on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side, these guys are gone. We just have our negative 10 over x1 squared. We can cross multiply at this point. When you cross multiply, which means multiplying along the diagonal, negative 4 x1 squared equals negative 10 x1. This looks like a quadratic equation, so let's move all the terms over to one side and we can solve by factoring. So we have negative 4 x1 squared plus 10 x1 equals 0. Looks like there's a common factor we can pull out. So they share negative 2 and they share a factor of x1. So let's pull that out. We have two factors here that multiply equal to zero. And solving by factoring is really nice because that means you have two miniature problems that you can solve. This first factor equal to zero, the second factor equal to zero. And let's see what we get. So one quote unquote solution we get is x1 equals zero. Um, you do need to verify to make sure that that solution works in the original equation. But actually, if you plug in 0 into the original curve, it's undefined. So this is an extraneous solution that just comes up from the algebraic process that we did to solve for x1. So that's not a real solution. But we did get a second solution. That does, it is uh, defined when we plug into our original function. And so we have a concrete number for our x coordinate where the tangent line is built. So um, next we can find our y coordinate that goes along with that. y1 is going to be 2 over x1. So 2 over 5 halves. This is a division of fractions. You divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's 2 times the reciprocal of 5 halves. 2 times 2 fifths. We get 4 fifths as our y coordinate at the tangent line. And remember, we had already built this formula for what the slope was going to be negative 2 over whatever x1 is squared. So we can get our slope of our tangent line now negative 2 over whatever x1 is squared, negative 2 over 25 fourths. You square a fraction by squaring the top and the bottom. And again, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we end up, you multiply straight across, you get negative 8 25ths as your slope of your tangent line. And so now we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We found x1 is 5 halves. The slope is negative 8 25ths. And the y coordinate where we're building our tangent line is 4 fifths. 
So these types of problems where they give you a lot less information about the tangent line can be tricky, but you can always keep in mind that if you have a tangent line problem and you're a little bit overwhelmed, just start by taking the derivative. And in these problems where you're not given the x location where you're supposed to build the tangent line, nor do you have the slope that you want to aim for, then you might have to do one of these more abstract type problems where you still use the slope and your point slope form, but you have to be a little more creative along the way to be able to solve for the unknowns. So let me know what other types of tangent line problems are tough for you, and I'd love to help and show some examples of that. Besides that, have an amazing day. Bye.